What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. So for today's video, we are going to do a very simple, but difficult, but complicated, but weird, but fun exercise that you could try with independence using the down and up beats. Yes, you gotta love it. Welcome to Percussion Life, my name is Eric Perez. If you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button, like the video, it kinda helps me out. And if you're a day one coming back, thank you. Thank you for stopping by and watching these videos, man. Seriously, I appreciate your support and your comments and all your love, oh man. Just love it, just love it. Before getting into the exercise, I just wanna take a quick moment to say, look at this shirt, it's beautiful, oh my goodness. But I wanted to give a quick shout out to Displays Green for sending me the shirt. Also, this shirt is very, very special because it's actually for us. It's actually meant for the future of music and 20% of the proceeds that they make to sell these shirts actually goes into music business education organizations and which is actually helping prepare you know this next generation of artists and songwriters and music creators so it's super super important because you know here in the United States unfortunately very sad many states many counties are actually you know cutting the funds and music and arts programs and it's so sad to see that and it, it makes me think about when I was a kid you know and taking advantage of all these programs to help you know my venture and what I wanted to do and things that I wanted to learn and it's just unfortunate that we see these programs being cut from our schools but now we have small businesses like this that sell merchandise that help fund these organizations that are continuing the journey and continuing the fight to, to help this next generation to understand music and love and the passion behind it and the creative process so yeah i love this shirt i'll put a link down below if you're interested in getting one again it serves a bigger purpose for this next generation and for people that are involved in this journey. So thanks again to Splash Green for being a huge supporter of this channel. So before breaking this exercise down, I'm actually gonna play it for you and then see if you can guess the difference between both of them. Yeah, I'm gonna play it and then break it down. And yeah, let's, uh, let's see if you can tell the difference. You ready? Let's go. Now for the second one. Now could you tell the difference? Probably not. The majority of people wouldn't be able to tell. You could either rewind it and see it again or allow me to explain it to you. So I absolutely love this exercise, especially when trying to understand the down and the up beats, okay? And I'm talking about down and up beats for drummers and you know, more modern music and not classical music like a composer or anything like that. I'm talking about what the majority of us know what a down and an upbeat. It's better, you know, way to say it as one and two and three and four. So basically in this scenario, the down beats are going to be those bass hits. And the up beats, which again is also the ands, can actually be the tips. So if you want to play it out, it's going to sound like this. I've shown this demonstration how to develop your non-dominant hand in this way where you're just going to be doing that basically the whole day. And basically the point of this independence exercise is to forget about this. This is gonna keep on going. But right here, what your dominant hand is gonna do, that's where the magic is. 
that is where the craziness is and it's like very simple to do but it's where we're going to place it which helps us understand the feel of the downbeat and the feel of the upbeat so let me first show you how to do that variation it's basically just five slaps That's it. So what your dominant hand is doing is those five slaps here and what your non-dominant hand is doing is the bass tip here. But now how do we put it together? Now to understand the downbeat feel of this independence exercise, I like to call them like trigger points or meeting points where the non-dominant hand and the dominant hand are going to meet in certain sections where it allows you to understand, oh, this is where I'm at in this exercise. So to start the downbeat feel is actually going to be with the bass, which is going to be your one and a close slap with your dominant hand. So doing that together, it's gonna to sound like this. After doing that bass with your non-dominant hand, what you're going to do is a finger with your non-dominant hand and then in between going to that bass, you're actually going to do another close slap with your dominant hand. So it's basically going to be fingertip, close slap, bass, like that, like that movement. So it's going to sound like this. So to put the first parts together, it's going to sound like this. Now here's another trigger part or a meeting part will let you understand the feel. And what you're going to do is what follows after the bass on your non-dominant hand is a finger. But this time you're gonna do another close slap with your dominant hand on the tumba at the same time you're gonna do it with the finger. So it's gonna sound like this. To put that together. starting to get the feel right and now the same thing that we did in the beginning for that second slap where it's kind of in between notes we're gonna do it the same way again because what follows after that finger is going to be a bass and in between that bass to that next finger you're gonna do a close slap with your dominant hand on the tumba so basically it's going to be bass close slap finger so it's gonna sound like this So to put that together, and then to finish it all off, after doing that finger, you're going to do a bass and you're going to land another close slap with your dominant hand on the tumba. And then basically, if you want to just keep on going again, you got to do that upbeat or that and to go back to the bass which is going to be the beginning part but yeah let me show that now to put everything together it's going to sound like this Now to play it all the way through. Love that exercise it seems very simple but as you see it has a little uh, little twists and turns so now that's the downbeat this is how you end up feeling that kind of feel now it gets kind of strange when you try to do with the upbeat so the difference here is our trigger point in the beginning this pattern does not change the feel of this does not change what changes is where you're gonna start it at so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a bass with our non-dominant hand and then a finger with their non-dominant hand. And that finger is what's gonna meet up with the close slap 
with your dominant hand on the tumba. So it's gonna sound like this. After doing that, we're gonna do something similar like we did in the first exercise. After doing that finger, what follows should be a bass. And in between that bass to go back to the finger, that's where we're gonna be putting that close slap with your dominant hand. So it's gonna sound like this. So to put that together, And as well as last time, except in reverse, after doing that, you're going to do a bass, but rather than landing it with the finger at the same time, this time you're gonna land with the bass at the same time. And you're gonna do that, another close slap here on the tumba. So it's gonna sound like this. Now to put that together. After doing that, just like last time, since we finished off with the bass, what follows is a finger with your non-dominant hand. And after that finger going to the bass, you're gonna fit another close slap in between that, which uh, kind of helps you keep on going with the move. So it's gonna sound like this. Let's put that together. And then to finish it off, you're gonna do another finger with your non-dominant hand with a close slap with your dominant hand. And basically, that's the same thing. You go back to the downbeat, and if you wanted to start the exercise over, start it off with that meeting point. But to kind of show that, it's gonna sound like this. Now to play it together. Not to play it all the way through. Uh, you gotta love these exercises, man. They're like, you know, some little tongue twisters in there, but at the same time, it's really, really disciplining you to learn a little bit more about the feel of the downbeat and to learn a little bit more about the feel of the upbeat because there is a difference in feel. If I start this way, versus this. It's crazy, especially when you start to really count it and start to feel it in that way. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Or counting it with the upbeat. One and two and three and four and 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 and it's crazy because you're doing nothing different here and you're doing nothing different here. The only difference is where you place your dominant hand. And that's kind of the point, man. As percussionists, we have to be creative and be adventurous and, you know, kind of hit those ands and these e's and those uhs and, you know, be, be somewhat different. But at the same time, it helps you understand pocket, timing, and if you didn't notice, this was all independence. All independence, learning the beats. All right, y'all, really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please take your time on this. It is a beautiful exercise. I love to share it every time because this is weird. I love weird stuff. I love stuff where where it just, you know, confuses you a little bit and you're like, what did he just do? But then, you know, oh, just that? Oh, it's not hard, simple. I think I can learn that. But all right, y'all, please leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys think. Y'all already know what to do. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day.